friends! Welcome back to the Tiny House Concierge. My name is Alaska. I am your Tiny House Concierge. And today we are going to talk about how a separate composting toilet works. So, the composting toilet, I get a lot of questions about this thing. That's, that's like one of the top questions that people want to know. They want to know, how much did your house cost, where do you park it, and what do you do with the poo? be answering that third question what do I do with the poo in graphic detail so if you wanted a lighter video as to how the composting toilet works there are those out there I am going to tell you absolutely everything so buckle up you've been warned um, if you appreciate that please like this video and also subscribe to this channel that would be awesome we would love to have you okay so composting toilet um, the basic idea of a composting toilet is that it takes water out of the equation. So when you flush a traditional toilet, you are flushing about two gallons of fresh drinking water down the toilet every single time. So if you think of the amount of times you flush a toilet in a day, times the number of people in your family, times two gallons, that's a lot of water. And at the risk of like over, I'm gonna overshare this whole video, so whatever. Um, I am an extremely well hydrated human. Like I am drinking water constantly and coffee and tea and sometimes sugar-free Rockstar and so on. So um, I probably pee like 11 times a day. Like I'm a really well hydrated human. <laughs> so that's 22 gallons of fresh water that I am saving alone just by using a composting toilet. Yeah, friends, yeah. So it makes a big difference. And going into this toilet, I was like super scared. So my house is actually double plumbed. I can have a regular toilet installed in here and I can also have a separate composting toilet. Uh, that is a thing you can do. And toilets really limit um, or determine your, your parking deal. So it's really good to have flexibility with regard to toilets. A composting toilet will open up your parking options. A regular toilet, you're gonna really need sewer to put that in. So just something to think about as you're going through your tiny journey. But anyway, back to composting toilets. Uh, composting toilets work slightly differently. Uh, this is the separate via, um, and I really, really love it. Like, really love it. Like, dear separate. <laughs> I could write you tiny love letters. Um, I would put this in a regular house at this point because it just makes more sense to me. Like it's easy to clean. I will put a link to the cleaning video uh, in the description below. So if you wanna see how you clean it, you can. Um, but today I'm just gonna describe how you use it. So we'll start back here. Uh, the basic, well actually, no, we're gonna, I'm gonna start by opening it up. So, I don't know if you can see that. You see that kind of blue part right there, and then there's this kind of like white bowl situation. So, basically, if I push on the seat, i.e. sit down, that opens that blue flap. And the basic idea here is that we're going to separate the liquids and the solids. So, like, P is gonna go in the front, and then like, solids are going to go in the back where the blue is. And if this is the point where you're like, what happens if you have diarrhea? What if you have to throw up? What if I'm on a period? Like, I will get to all that, so just keep watching this video. Okay, but first we're gonna go back to how it works. So, uh, with if you pee, that'll go in the front part. Okay, it'll go down oh, that little hole right there. And then if you can see on the side, I don't know if you can see it, that white pipe, whoop, right there, whoop, right there. That is a, that's where it's plumbed into my gray water. So gray water is like sink water, shower water, anything that's not 
poo water. And again, there is no poo water in this house. So the pee goes in with my sink water and my shower water. That's how that goes. As far as the poo situation, that is going to go through that black flap and into the bucket. So you can see that is a bucket in the bottom and it's just lined with a compostable bag. I buy them from Costco in bulk. Super simple. So how does it not smell? Here's how. Right here, there is a vent. And in this compartment somewhere, there is a fan. So what happens is you poo into this bucket and the, this is actually the fan vent right there. Um, there's a fan that runs continuously all the time right here. So you know how like dry dog poop doesn't smell? Same idea. The fan just dries out whatever goes in this bucket continuously and then it vents it. Oh, I'm gonna just set this down for a second. And then it vents it to the outside. And if you're wondering like, does it just smell like poo outside your house all the time? Um, no, I actually have not smelled it outside the house. <laughs> and no one else has told me that either. So plenty of people have this toilet, um, no. So uh, then every week, and I change it every week because those biodegradable bags really are designed to biodegrade. <laughs> Um, I could probably go as a single person, I could probably go maybe two or three weeks without changing out the bag, but I choose to change it out sooner because again, those bags are not designed to last very long. Um, so does it smell? Um, no star and, <laughs> and the star is, uh, as far as the poo situation, no, it doesn't smell. Um, maybe when you're like changing it out, it would smell a little bit, but like in general, no. Um, if anything smells, um, maybe there's like a little mustiness occasionally, like a, a whiff of mustiness, but, but not like poo, it doesn't smell bad. Um, if anything smells bad and occasionally something will, it is like 99% the pee funnel. I know that's super counterintuitive. You would swear on your life that it is like back here that is smelling. It's not. It's the pee funnel. And so that's why up here, I keep a spray bottle of vinegar. If you just spritz it with vinegar, um, and you're done. Some people will do it every time they use the bathroom. Um, I'll just do it every once in a while if it smells or when I'm cleaning the toilet, but, uh, or I'll pour a cup of white vinegar down the drain to like rinse out the pipe. Um, white vinegar will fix the problem immediately. So if anything smells, white vinegar fixes it. Um, so when you sit down on the toilet, I told you that's how you open this part. And this is about the part that people are like, well, wait, like what happens if I have diarrhea? Like what happens if I go both at the same time? Okay, friends. <laughs> I get the question. The basic answer is like, do your best. Like if it's poop of any kind, whatever consistency it is, it needs to go in the bag. Do not try to put like diarrhea down the pee funnel. The only thing that goes down the pee funnel is pee, water, and vinegar, and that's it. And if you're on your period, maybe blood. I told you this is graphic. Okay. So, um, but anything poo related absolutely needs to go into the bucket. And again, just do your best. Okay, the worst thing that will happen if like there's, there is too much liquid back here from diarrhea or whatever, is that the fan won't be able to keep up and then it will smell a little bit. So if that's a problem, all you're gonna do is change out that bag sooner. The end. So it's not, it's really not the end of the world. Um, as far as the pee funnel, like with your, if you're on your period, it kind of depends on what kind of products you use. If you use like a diva cup or something like that, like you can totally empty it in here. You'll just want to do it carefully and rinse it out with water 
when you're done or spritz it with alcohol or something when you're done. Um, as far as if you're using like, you know, natural tampons and stuff, you can totally put that back, back into the back. Cause remember that's biodegradable waste. So your tampon is biodegradable. That's cool. Put it back there. Um, don't put plastic applicators and stuff back there. It's not trash, but if it's biodegradable, it can go back there. And as with like pads and stuff, if they have like that plasticky liner and stuff, you'll want to put that in a separate trash, like elsewhere. Um, yeah. Oh, throwing up. <laughs> Don't do it in a composting toilet. <laughs> it's, it will just be disgusting and it will, you'll probably just keep throwing up because it will be so gross. So yeah, don't throw up in a composting toilet. I would say throw up either in the freezer box. And if you haven't watched my other videos, um, the freezer box is a, like a, a Walmart bin that I lined with a compostable bag that I keep in my freezer where I put biodegradable trash, like coffee grounds, eggshells, that kind of thing, so that it doesn't smell in my regular trash. Um, it's not the cutest thing to throw up in, but at least it doesn't smell. It get out to the composting trash, but it's like a box to throw up in lined with a biodegradable bag. Um, the other option, I mean, I guess you could throw up, I have a garbage disposal, so you could throw up in the sink, I guess. I mean, it's not ideal. Or some people would just take a bag, biodegradable or otherwise, and just throw up in a bag. Whatever you do, like, you don't want to throw up in this. Again, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Like, you could just change the bag out because there's no way the fan is going to keep up with liquid like that. But it would just be so gross. I don't know anyone who would choose to throw up in this. So don't. Um, okay. I'm trying to think through if there's any more questions. So yeah, saves 22 gallons of water per day for me alone. It is fairly easy to clean. It doesn't really smell, again, except those little star things that I mentioned, but not a big deal. Oh, actually, fun fact about smells. So you know how when you use the toilet, like in a regular house, it smells, the bathroom smells really bad, right? And that's for two reasons. One because the smell happens when bacteria is wet. So when you poo in water, you're like adding water to bacteria that creates smell. And then when you flush, you whirl the pool, poo particles like into the air and it's gross and it smells. Um, in a composting toilet, that doesn't happen. There's no, you don't add water, you add air. So for that reason, you can do anything you want in this bathroom and somebody could come in 10 seconds later and it's not going to have this horrible smell like in a regular house. So that's kind of convenient. I think a lot of people are like, I'm never going to use the bathroom at my friend's house because it's tiny and it'll just make the whole house smell. No, it actually smells less than a regular toilet. Okay, friends. Oh, uh, as far as what I use to line it. I use the bio bag, tall kitchen food scrap bags. I do buy these at Costco. Um, you can buy composting toilet bags specifically, but they're really expensive. So I don't, I just buy biodegradable bags at Costco. All right, friends, that's it. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial of how to use a separate composting toilet. My name is Alaska. This is the Tiny House Concierge. If you would be so kind as to like this video, subscribe to it, to the channel, that would be great. And if you wanna leave a comment below telling me what toilet you use in your tiny home or what toilets you are thinking about using, um, I would be super curious to hear it. All right, thank you friends, and I will see you in the next video.